Hello, this is Justin from the Tech Train here. And if you've been looking at the news recently, you'll almost certainly have heard about the incident with the Banksy painting being shredded. This is the Girl with a Balloon painting, original done by Banksy, which sold at Sotheby's auction for just over a million pounds. And within seconds of the hammer coming down, the painting was shredded. This is something done deliberately by Banksy and has caught a lot of attention. And I was thinking, how would it be possible to emulate that effect in Microsoft? PowerPoint. So I've gone ahead and uh, put a little bit together here and I'll show you how I create this effect where you can put any picture you like in a frame against any background you like and with a simple click of the mouse you can shred that picture. Uh, I've got another one uh, here to show you an uh, alternative on that uh, so this is a straight edge shredder so uh, here we go and we shred the picture. So I'm going to show you in this video how you can create the Banksy shredder effect for pictures, paintings, photographs or text effects right after this. So the first thing we're going to do is get ourselves a new PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to change the layout to blank. Now we need a wall picture for the background and I recommend going to a website such as pexels.com where a quick search for wall creates a whole raft of different possible suggestions. Now the great thing is that these are um, Creative Commons so you can use these within your work without any problem at all. Um, I'm going to choose this one here, which is this uh, wooden wall effect. So we're going to download that. It has the Creative Commons license, free for personal and commercial use with no attribution required. And I do like using the, uh, the legal ones for uh, using um, images in classrooms. As an IT teacher and a computer science teacher, I think it's fair that I demonstrate that I know how to use images online legally and not just go to Google Images. So now we've got uh, our background, I'm going to put that background into this picture, but I'm not going to right click and format the background and do it that way. I'm actually going to insert it as a picture. So I'm going to insert picture and we're going to go to the desktop where I have this picture here. So now that I've got my picture, uh, we can see that it's not quite the right shape for this slide. I have my slide set to uh, 16 by 9. Uh, so I need to crop this picture, first of all, to that same ratio. So I'm going to click on the picture and come up to Crop and choose Aspect Ratio and then choose 69. Uh, yes, I'm happy with uh, the way that looks. I can slide this up and down and, and get this as I want. Perhaps something like that will do. Click Crop and now I can fit this into my slide perfectly like that. So now I've got my uh, background picture. I need to have the picture that I'm going to be shredding. So I'm going to insert picture and we'll choose another picture here. Um, let's just choose this one uh, that I used earlier on for something. So now I'm going to resize that to the size that I'm going to use. I think something like that will do. But equally, you could create a text box. If you're going to create a text box with text on, uh, what I would do is uh, create your text box, type your text in there, um, and format that how you want it to be. So format that, um, and color it, and, and uh, do, all, do all this stuff. Uh, once you have created your text box exactly as you want it, I would then right click and cut it and then right click and paste it as a picture. So it's no longer an editable text box, it's now an image of that text box. So if you're going to use text uh, like I did in the demonstration earlier, then do that. Uh, so now I have that image there. The next thing is I want a frame. So to do that, I'm going to just let me draw a rectangle. Uh, I'm going to start off with that rectangle about the same size as the picture. I don't want any fill, I just want the outline. I'm going to choose the um, sort of a browny gold colour, I suppose. We need that to be a little thicker, so if I come down to weight, you can see the thickest I can get it is six points, which isn't really enough. So I'm going to go back to shape outline, down to weight, and choose more lines. And here I can increase that thickness of the line a lot more. Now I think it's probably a little dim against that background, so let's try a different colour. Let's try that yellow. That looks good. 
So I'm happy with the uh, the thickness. I'm happy with the color. Uh, I want to give it a bit of a bevel effect as well. So um, either in the format shape box, I can click on this uh, and go down to the 3D format. Uh, alternatively, with that selected, you can go to the shape effects and choose bevel and choose whichever one of these. I'm going to go for the relaxed inset. That's the second one in, which I think gives a good picture frame appearance. So now we have the picture frame, the picture and the background. The next thing is to decide on the shape of the parts of the picture which will be missing. Now in the demonstration earlier, I showed uh, two different ways of doing that, one with straight rectangles and one with triangles. Um, I'm gonna use the um, triangles, I think, for this one, but it works with either of them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, you see I've zoomed in a little bit here uh, so that I can see clearly the width of this and I'm going to go up to shapes and choose a rectangle and I want this to be as thin as I can get it here. Now there's a limit to how thin PowerPoint will allow you to make a shape so if I zoom in on this shape um, I want, don't want any outline, let's get rid of the outline there we are but if I try and make that shape any thinner I can't however if you want to you can make it thinner uh, if you click on format at the top the width here can be controlled and you can type in anything that you want there so I can type in here if I want to 0.5 um, or rather what I meant to do there was 0.05 there we are so that gives a very very thin effect I actually find that about uh, 0.1 is a little better if it's too thin it almost doesn't look as though there are parts missing it just looks a bit fuzzy so about 0.1 or about 0.15 uh, is about right. I think I'll stick with 0.15 for this just because it'll be a bit easier to see in the video. Now once I've created one I'm going to put this about there um, so it's almost as wide as the frame. Then if I want to change the picture later on and that new picture is just slightly wider then that won't matter. Now this shape here is going to be um, the part of the picture which is missing. So the part, uh, the gap if you like, between the shreds. So once I've got one of these, I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it and then immediately move that so it is the same height as the first rectangle. And if I get that right, then when I press Control D again, I get the next one in the same proportional distance and I can just keep on pressing Control D to get a whole load of those rectangles. Now they're all uh, nicely aligned there. Now if you end up with them going in a bit of a staggered uh, or a bit of a sort of a, a slope because they weren't quite even um, then just simply come underneath the slide drag and select over all of those and then you can go to format align and align the tops. Uh, as it is they're fine and they're all equally distant as well. So the next thing we want to do is to combine all of these separate shapes into one single shape. Even though they're not physically connected, they can still act as one single shape. So I'm going to select all of these, making sure that I haven't selected the background uh, instead. And then at the top in the Drawing Tools toolbar, I'm going to click on Format and then come over to Merge Shapes and just click Union. So that now means that I have one single shape. All of these here now are a single shape like that. So now that I've got the um, single shape of the, the shredded parts, the next thing is to click on the background and I'm going to right click and choose copy. I'm not going to paste just yet, I'm just going to simply copy it so I can paste a copy back in a moment. Now this next step, I'm going to click on the background once uh, to select it and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on any one of these uh, blue rectangles here. So I've selected that shape as well. And with those two shapes selected in that order, I can now go to the Drawings tool again, click on Format, back over to Merge Shapes, and this time we're going to choose Intersect. So now what you see we've got, um, the blue rectangles have now changed into um, basically the parts that we had as the background from that background picture. So now I can press paste again and paste that picture back in and I need to pay attention to this top left corner here because I need to make sure that it is absolutely in the right order, uh, right, right position sorry. And you'll see that when I snap it up to the top I get those three little uh, horizontal dashes that show that it's lined up at the top. 
If it's lined on the left, you can see I get three dashes going up vertically. But what I want is to have it right in that top left corner again. So I get two dashes to the top and two dashes to the left. Once it's in the right position, I can right click on it and send it to the back. So now I have my um, picture, my frame, and here it looks as though those rectangles are uh, missing. But if I was to drag this, you'll see there is something still there. Those rectangles that we cut out are still there, but because of the fact that they're uh, beautifully lined up with the background, they're invisible. We need to make sure now that the picture is in the right order. So I'm going to click on Home and then click on Select and open up the Selection pane. Now this picture here we can see is um, this one here. This is picture six. Um, rectangle nine is the frame. Picture 57 is the background. And picture 56 is the, um, the shredded bit down underneath here. So I need the picture that's going to be shredded to be underneath the shreds, if you like. So I'm going to drag that down so it's above the bottom part. You can see if I click this picture now and I drag down that once it's behind those shreds, it looks shredded. So we can sort of see how that effect kind of works there. We want to um, do this in an animation. So the best thing to do is with the picture selected, go to animations, click on add animation. And we're going to come down to motion paths and choose the lines uh, motion there. Now click on that and you can see that that effect works quite well. If you want to make it move further down, uh, simply hold the shift key and put your mouse over the red dot here and then you can drag down. Shift um, allows you to make sure it goes vertically down rather than accidentally going off at an angle. So shift snaps it to the vertical so you can just go up and down as far as you want. So I'm going to put it about there. And now if I play this uh, presentation and I click my mouse or click on the forward arrow, there we are. We have shredded that picture. So that's a really simple way of creating a shred image effect, a Banksy shredder effect in Microsoft PowerPoint. So I hope you have some fun with that. If you did enjoy this, uh, then please give this video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then that would be great if you could subscribe because then it helps me and you get to be the first person to know when a new video like this goes up. So you can be the first person to use these little techniques. Um, I also upload all of the resources that I've used in this presentation, so the demonstration PowerPoint at the beginning, and indeed this one that I've made just now. Um, I'll be uploading those to my Patreon website, so just head over to patreon.com slash thetechtrain, and there you can subscribe to me on Patreon, and that supports the channel, which is brilliant and much appreciated, and you'll get to be able to download all of these files and also see a few extra videos as well. So thank you very much indeed uh, for watching. Uh, do leave a like, do subscribe, share if you think that you know someone who would enjoy doing this. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Bye for now.